there. I'm back. It's been so long since I made a video for the channel, and that's because lots been going on in life in general. Um, now that we're in a different phase of the pandemic, work is in a different phase of busyness, and just life stuff, family stuff, all the things. But I thought I would pop on to give a little update on my autoimmune hepatitis because I do have some updates and I've also been learning a lot. Um, but first, let me just say, I, I hope this was obvious, but based on some of the comments I've been getting, just a reminder, I'm a regular lady. I have a job that has nothing to do with medicine. I was ignorant about a lot of stuff. I'm ignorant about so many things related to medicine and health. I am still learning about the liver. I am four or three free forms into this diagnosis and have only been thinking about it for six, seven months. So like, yeah, this is me talking to a phone um, about my experience. And this started because I did this years ago when I was diagnosed with um, generalized anxiety to start. I had to think about what that was, generalized anxiety disorder. And I just started sharing my experiences with anxiety as a way to connect with people and a way to destigmatize mental illness. And then when I had all of the challenges starting in July 2020, which ended up being microscopic colitis, I started talking about that and just kind of processing what I was going through on medical leave a year ago. Almost a year ago is when I went on medical leave to figure out what was happening. So that's why I started these videos. I am not a hepatologist. I'm not a doctor. I have nothing to do with the medical field. Go talk to those people. Um, at least talk to those people. I am, I am not your source for that. I... I'm a leadership consultant, so I can tell you a lot about leaders. Can't tell you a lot about medicine. Um, so yeah, just to set your expectations of what this is. So I've been spending a lot of time catching up on all of the content from the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association, or the AIHA. Highly, highly recommend. I'll put a link um, in the video description to go, and um, they have support groups for folks. Uh, I just went to the newly diagnosed support group. That was incredibly helpful with Dr. Lambert. So that I'm hoping I'm saying Dr. Lambert's name, right? That was really, really helpful to meet other people like myself who had just been diagnosed. I've also gone to one, it's been a time conflict problem, but I've gone to one of the West coast support groups. So they do support groups. This is West coast of the United States in case that's not um, obvious by my ethnocentrism and my American accent. Um, they have a lot of different groups by American geography. I hope there are other related organizations. I know they've had some folks on from the UK. Um, and I don't know that one has to be American to join these groups, but time zone wise, these are moderated discussions about an hour a month where you meet with people who are in different stages of AIH. Some are newly diagnosed, some have been managing the disease for decades, um, primarily adults, primarily women, but also people of other genders and pediatric cases, which is normally parents. So the support, it's a really great way to find people um, if you are um, diagnosed with AIHA. Come to find out, it's it's much more rare than I thought. It's only 40,000 people in the whole country. I thought it was 40,000 a year. No, it's like 40,000 people. But the more that I learn about it, the more I suspect it's probably underdiagnosed um, or it can be easy to miss because a lot of cases are asymptomatic. So AIHA has been great. They have a, a bunch of resources on their website. I uh, My birthday is coming up, so I try to do a charity fundraiser for my birthday every year for different things. I've been doing cats for obvious reasons, if you know me at all. Um, but this year, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to fundraise for the AIHA. And that seems a little selfish, but there's a very exciting meeting coming up in January that they're hosting with folks from the FDA. And it's around funding and clinical trials for AIH specific treatments. So in case you don't know, there are no treatments specific for AIH. They repurpose therapies and drugs from that are used for other conditions. And this is something I've experienced before with my anxiety and the insomnia related to my anxiety, which is there are a lot of things that are prescribed. Um, oh goodness, there's a word. I wanna say off script, but it's probably not right. So my psychiatrist has prescribed medicine that's not actually for anxiety, but we've later learned treats anxiety. And that's what has is, which is what I'm taking. It's for kidney transplant patients, but it also treats autoimmune hepatitis in a lot of folks. So because of this, there are some folks who just don't respond to the traditional treatment. That's me with steroids, but I do so far, I'll give this update in a minute, it seems that's is working. Um, 
So it's a really great way if you have EIH to connect with other people. Uh, it is also not a substitute for medical advice, but they do have lots of great resources that they've produced. The AIH bootcamp video is a really great place if you're wondering, um, and it also is a way to destigmatize it. I had the first time where somebody had said something negative about hepatitis. And again, it's because there's a connotation for viral hepatitis. So the ones you probably know, A, B, C, and I think there's also a D and E. I'm learning so much about the liver. So yeah, that is where I've been spending a lot of my time learning. And it's been really helpful to continue to understand what I'm managing. And yeah, if you're in that space where you don't know, that's hard. I'm really sorry. I'm also not an expert on the medical system. I am fortunate to have good insurance, great insurance through my employer um, and in-network doctors that are accessible to me. So I know that's not the case for everybody, especially in the U.S. So I'm sorry if that's you and there you're dealing with that. But again, like I'm kind of a regular lady and I'm not an insurance expert, so I don't have much to offer there. I've been fortunate not to have to deal with that. So it's been a bit of a couple months and a couple, two weeks ago now, I got my first blood draw and that was to test and see where we were at on the liver enzymes. Um, and then also if there was any toxicity caused by the azathioprine. So I wrote down my numbers because I was really curious. As a reminder, the two liver enzyme markers that you're, that they're looking at are the AST and the ALT. And the last draw we have on record is in July. And in July, my AST was 132. My ALT was 188. We are trying to get the AST to 30 or below. That's the goal. That is the maintenance goal. Um, so 132, 30, not close. That being said, though, these values were in, I think at the high point, they were triple what they were in July. So as I shared in a previous video, uh, a lot of things like autoimmune hepatitis sort of ride a wave up and down, you know, flare and it'll resolve. So we can't just look at the values um, as the only marker. That's why things like a liver biopsy, a fiber scan are used in conjunction with that as well as your symptoms. So this is not the end all be all, but it's directional to show us how we're going. So I did talk to one of my hepatologists yesterday and there was good news, which is uh, my ALT in three months has dropped from 188 to 51. And my AST has dropped from 132 to 47. 47 is not 30, 47 is a lot closer to 30. And we know that as a take can take a few months to reach a therapeutic dose. I am coming up on just past two months on the medication. So I'm just coming into that full dosage, which is, or full therapeutic effect. This is similar if you've taken certain antidepressants. So Prozac's a great example where it takes a while to get to a therapeutic dose in the body. And likewise, when you discontinue the medication, it takes some time for the body to uh, the half-life is very long is I think the easy way to explain that. So that was really good news. So I'm on the monthly blood draw uh, train. The, the even better news is that I'm not showing any signs of toxicity. So the two things I need to monitor are 6TG, 6 TGN and 6 MMPN. I had to write those down. And that's looking at liver toxicity and blood marrow toxicity. And the good news is that nothing is showing up. And that's with the azathioprine. We have to continue to check and make sure that um, we're not being toxic to anything else. The other thing that I've been watching, and uh, I need to do another thing on supplements and diet, is um, making sure that I'm taking a vitamin without um, retinol. So no retinol, which is vitamin A, beta carotene only. Other than that, I'm following a normal, <laughs> normal, normal diet. I haven't been on a normal diet for a long time. I'm following the same diet. I um, have a lot more energy than I did a few months ago. Don't get me wrong, I'm still tired. I think that's adulthood, but I have a lot more energy. I notice that when I'm exercising, that I'm not pushing myself hard. I just like, oh, I feel good. I can, you know, I want to continue doing this dance workout or continue whatever it is because my body feels really good. Related to that, my sleep has improved a lot and that is so helpful being able to have that time for my brain to rest 
and for my body to rest. And again, the liver is regenerating. The other thing that I'm being really careful about is my sun exposure. I think I shared this in a previous video that the um, risk of skin cancer is slightly higher. Um, so now I went back to my dermatologist and I'm getting yearly skin checks just to make sure that everything looks great. As you can tell, I don't spend a lot of time outdoors naturally. I realized I was also wearing this shirt today. Um, but just being really good about sun protection, um, given my very, very fair skin, but past the skin check, I've got lots of little moles and freckles, but my skin has always been this way. So just putting a little more attention to that. I take in my flu shot and I'm scheduled for the bivalent booster in the near future. That's something that has been really helpful with my primary care physician is to get advice on all the inoculations and making sure that I'm staying up to date. There continues to be mixed information about how immunocompromised I am. So I would really, if that's something you're curious about, there are a lot of resources on this, but I've found the AHA has been really helpful and come to find out I might not be as immunocompromised as I think. So our um, case numbers are pretty low where I live right now. And that's been good because I have been experimenting in places that are well ventilated or I can be spaced out not wearing a mask. Um, because my immune system needs a test, a test drive it is, is certainly not the same as people who are in chemotherapy or on higher doses of immunosuppressants, but it is something that you're thinking about and it's, it's totally new to me. So me being me, of course, I'm going to overdo it and be extra safe until I understand, but having taken, um, a trip and been fine and spending time with people outside of the household, like friend, more friends and family and been fine then I'm, I'm hopeful that that and all of my um, protections <laughs> are going to be helpful. So yeah, at this point, I'm going to be doing monthly blood draws. So I'm um, not going to say I'm excited about that, but it's important to me that we're going to monitor and make sure that the, the toxicity um, is within reasonable values and that um, we can get that ALT, AST down to 30, which is ideal. It seems like we're going to continue this dosage for a little while. If it just doesn't budge, it's possible that we do something else. But again, um, the liver continues to regenerate and heal itself. And having these numbers come down is just such a relief. Um, and that's what's so funny. I realize that I, I assume this is under underdiagnosed, given how many people are asymptomatic and the fact that I just felt tired Again, I got more tired over time, so it wasn't as if I woke up exhausted one day and you realize that, that yeah, that you were living and you were feeling very different or you don't realize oh, it's not normal <laughs> to feel to feel this tired. So I, I hope this will be my last update for a little while. I, I don't know. I do. I would like to talk more um, about uh, the alternative <laughs> medicine road that I went down. Um, so that's hopefully something upcoming. I'm still not back on gluten. I've been off of gluten for a year now, but I mean, with my primary care physician to try to figure out the gluten reintroduction protocol. I don't think, um, Dr. M is great. Love Dr. M. I don't think she'll be the person, but I need to find somebody who can help me. And my uh, RDN is not going to be that person. Still have not gone back to working with my RDN. At some point, she finally stopped emailing me, but for a while, I was getting to check an email every week or sometimes twice a week, and yeah, that is not what I was looking for. That was not what I was looking for, so I'm continuing to learn to set boundaries on what works for me. Okay, this ended up being long. This was not my intention. This was supposed to be a short video, um, but yeah, autoimmune hepatitis. The journey continues. It's a lifelong journey, and I'm happy that things are normalizing and it's possible that with a little luck that I'll be back down in a normal range soon. So be safe, be well y'all and chat soon. Bye.